everyone, I'm Hilary Hahn. I've gotten a lot of questions about what equipment I use with my violin in order to avoid injury. Some people asked about the mark that they get on the um, underside of their jaw from holding the violin on the chin rest, and other people have wondered what I use for a shoulder rest, which is the, the thing that clamps underneath the violin to fill in the space um, that might be empty so you don't have to scrunch your shoulder up. And I, I would say exactly what I use, but the thing is that it took me a long time to find the right equipment for me. And if I were to say I use this and someone were to go out and think that that's the solution, it may not be the right thing for them. So instead of giving specifics, I'm just going to give some suggestions for what you can do to find the right match, or if you don't have any luck finding something that feels good, how you can customize. When I was little, my, um, my dad noticed that the chin rest I was using was leaving a, a mark and um, it was getting kind of bruised and irritated. So he took a whittling knife and um, started to carve down the edge at the, the back of the chin rest towards your neck um, so that it was flatter and a little bit rounder. So I would advise that. Um, if you're a violinist, don't do the whittling yourself. <laughs> Get someone who knows what they're doing and has a sharp knife and keep your fingers away from it. But um, one way you can tell where exactly on your chin rest the um, problematic contact is, is um, if you, you should get a wooden chin rest to start with, not a plastic one, um, because you can work more with a wooden one. So you take the wooden chin rest and you um, put a little bit of, I don't know, Vaseline or lotion or something, um, skin friendly, but a little greasy, onto the part that's most irritated, and you put your chin back right where you hold, in the position where you hold the violin normally, and then you carefully lift your chin off, and you can see on the chin rest then where exactly you are touching it, and um, you can work on carving that down so that it's, it's more um, jaw and chin friendly. Another thing you can do, once you have the approximate shape right, um, I believe in patting any area that comes in contact with um, bone so you don't pinch the skin too much. Of course, not direct contact with bone, but um, with a chin rest, you only have this thin layer of skin there, and um, if you have wood and bone pinching skin, something's going to go wrong. Your skin's going to be very unhappy. So in order to avoid abscesses and infection and all this, I, which does happen, um, not for me because I've been careful, but for a lot of people. Um, I use at least a very thick washcloth. I like the washcloth because it's mildly abrasive and it also has a fair amount of thickness to it, so it's padded and it also somehow doesn't make, um, make my skin as irritated because I think it has a little you know, pocket of air in the loops there, so it's a little bit more aerated. Um, so I like to use that. There are other options. There are foam pads you can put on top that are pre-made. Um, people use Strad pads. Those are very thick right over the edge of the chin rest. So you want to make sure if you're using one of those that you have a fairly flat chin rest so that you don't jack your neck up like this and create um, physical neck problems with, like, with your spinal alignment. So some people do that. One thing I've done in the past in order to get just the right shape to the chin rest so that I don't have uneven pressure on any part of my jaw is to go to the pharmacy and or drugstore and pick up those um, sheets of foam that have adhesive on one side and just sort of springy foam on the other. They're, they're mainly for feet, so if you go to the foot section, um, they're, they sell them for you know, patting corns and patting blisters and all of that so that you don't rub against your shoe. So they're used to taking a fair amount of weight. If you think about the amount of pressure you put on the violin from your chin, it's pretty thick, so you're pretty heavy, so you want to have something thick and resilient. So I would advise that. You go to the drugstore, get one of those, um, cut it to um, a size and shape you think would be good for the particular part of the chin rest that you want to raise or pad and start there. So first you, you put on the adhesive and see if it works and if it doesn't work you peel it off and 
try again <laughs> and try again and again and again. But the good thing about that is it's not very expensive. Um, the adhesive does stick pretty well. It's padded and it comes in sheets so you can um, make several different shaped pads out of one particular sheet. So I like that. That works pretty well as a temporary solution. If you want to get very particular, and this is mainly for chin rests, shoulder rests are a different thing, but if you want to get very particular about the customization of your chin rest, once you know exactly what shape you like, if you've padded it the way you like, if you have um, carved it to a shape that works, some small violin makers, not the really big repair shops, but the individual makers, will be amenable to making a custom chin rest for you. It's more expensive, you may have to pay a fair amount, but that is, in the long run, definitely worth it because you don't want to be messing up your neck or your um, getting a, an infected thing on your chin that you have to then um, be really careful about for months on end. So definitely worth investigating if you have violin makers in your area. As far as shoulder rests, you really just have to experiment. I've had all sorts of different issues I've had to solve over the years. When I was younger, my shoulders were narrower, so I always felt like the shoulder rest was slipping off, so I needed a shoulder rest that came in really close to the edge of the violin. Um, as I got older, you know, my neck grew, so I realized that I wasn't using a tall enough shoulder rest. And then when I play, I play things often in high positions, so I can't hold the violin with my hand, and I'm holding it with my, with my shoulder. So sometimes the feet, the rubber that's on the feet, wants to slip, and that's not good. Um, so you just really have to experiment with that. You may notice some people with their shoulder rests, wrapping them. Um, I did do some of that before. Now I have a shoulder rest that works pretty well, so I don't um, mess with it too much. But um, you can wrap um, cloth around the shoulder rest to thicken certain areas to make it um, ergonomically more friendly for your particular body. There's a lot of jerry-rigging of equipment, and so right now I'm actually working on developing a chin rest that is um, more jaw-friendly and that I can then um, sell so that people have the option of something a little bit um, milder <laughs> for their chin. But the shoulder rest thing is just, it's really complicated. So some teachers advise no shoulder rests, but I have to say that um, the most important thing to consider is your alignment. So your shoulders should be, when you're playing, pretty much like they are when you're just standing straight. Your neck should be straight, um, in alignment with your spine, not stiffly, but just naturally, so that all you have to do is raise your left arm without raising your shoulder, turn your head, and then the violin fits right in there and you don't have to do this or this or that or that. Um, when you think about the nerves that run through your spine and your neck, you really want to make sure you're not pinching anything or creating tension. Playing the violin is asymmetrical enough as it is. So what you really should be doing is playing, stop in exactly that position, check yourself in the mirror, make sure nothing is weird. If you can, get a mirror behind you as well so that you can look forward and see what your back looks like um, from behind. And um, that should help a lot. And just adjust what you have. Adjust your chin rest, adjust your shoulder rest, adjust your technique, adjust your, um, the set of your shoulders, adjust how you support your upper body with your core abdominal muscles, um, adjust your stance, um, make sure you're not putting all your weight on one foot, sticking your hip out. There's a lot to keep in mind, but the most important thing is your alignment and working with that, then you find the things that fill the gaps so that you can be a more natural player.